serve that up to you guys in the end. So the first stage in making a good cup of tea is withering. Anyone have an, any idea what, what, what withering is? Precisely. It's where we're taking... Now, when you pluck a tea, uh, a tea leaf, 70% of that is just water. It's what I have in my hand here. 70% of it is water. Now, to make good tea, we have to extract that water out and just leave those concentrated oils that are inside, inside, that, uh, inside that leaf. And the way we do that is we put, it, we, we put our green leaf into a withering trough like this, and we have a mix between hot air and ambient air. And we push this hot air through this withering trough, and what you have here at the top is a mesh. So the tea will lay on top here. The fan will blow in the hot air that comes up from the dryer, and it will mix with, um, with, with the ambient air and will slowly evaporate away the moisture that's on the leaf. Now, withering will depend on the elevation that you're growing tea at. It'll also depend on the climatic factors. So, for example, if, you've if it's been raining for the past few days, you're going to have a lot more moisture in your leaf. You're also going to have a lot more surface moisture. So you'll have to wither at a higher temperature, and usually the temperature for withering is at about 127 degrees Fahrenheit, that's the kind of hot air that we, that we look to push through. But a withering process will take anywhere between 6 to 12 hours. So if it's been raining for the past few days, if you have a lot of surface moisture, you're looking at withering for about 12 hours at a very harsh rate. But at the same time, while you're withering, you will do what these ladies are doing here. You will turn the tea leaves over. And the reason why we do that is you want everything in that trough to be evenly withered. You don't want the bottom to be very, you know, you don't want the bottom to be crisp, dry, and the top to still be wet. So that's why we'll turn the leaf over every two hours. We'll also be looking at the, at, uh, at the humidity, because that will make a big impact. And we'll keep looking at the weather, and we'll keep turning over. And everything will depend on the climatic factors. So going away from the rain example, if we're talking about the quality season, now what I mean by quality season is in the western side of the island, you get a drought that kicks in. Now this drought carries on till about the end of February. And at the same time, at the end of February, with the drought, you get a very harsh wind that comes over the mountains and blows into the valleys. So any surface moisture left on the leaf is evaporated away. So as a tea bush, it goes into a state of survival now that it's not had water for the past few weeks. It goes into a state of survival and it produces some very concentrated oils in its leaves. Now, because there isn't a lot of moisture in this leaf to begin with, you don't want to give it a harsh wither. You may only wither it for about six hours at a very low temperature, and you'll turn it every hour. So tea manufacturing is really about learning a bit of science, but having a lot of expertise and skill, and understanding you know, what's happening with the environment, what's been happening for the past you know, couple of weeks while this tea has been growing on the bush, and how do we as manufacturers manipulate, I would say, you know, manipulate um, the things that we can do in, in the factory to provide, well, to produce a good cup of tea. This sign here, NG103, do you know why we write that? Each withering trough will have a sign on it to say where that tea has been plucked. So, for example, going back to your, uh, going back to, to, to one of your points, you know, you've got 6,000 different varieties of, of tea bush, you want to know which division and which tea bush that, uh, that, that this particular wither came from. And the reason being is that you may have plucked tea from a young tea bush, so you don't want to mix that in with, with, with more mature bushes because that will lower the quality of your tea. You may have had, um, you know, you may be looking to make a, sp a specific batch of tea. So when we make tea for the resort, we have ours labeled PMD, and they come from a particular cultivar so that we know, look, this is the tea that we've plucked from these bushes, that we want to manufacture separately to everything else. So, as a consumer, mm -hmm. if I really like NG103, how do you balance the flavour through the 12 months? Through the 12 months, that's a, great, that's a great question. What you do is, I mean, a lot of the time, to balance this flavour, what, what plantations will do is they will keep a batch of their seasonal quality tea. And when they release into the market, they will mix a bit of their seasonal quality with their other qualities throughout the year, and they will keep giving you their estate standard. Um, we do it a bit differently, and we get just the seasonal tea, 
and we get seasonal tea and we sort of tend to buy for this year and for next year just to keep a stock over uh, for, the, for, for, for the next year. But that's what plantations do. They'll keep a stock of their seasonal tea and they'll mix it in through, through, through the 12 months to keep, an even, to keep an even amount. But one of the biggest problems that you find with tea is that sometimes it's always like this with a tea plantation. Tea plantations will produce great tea, then the season will change and they'll produce some terrible tea, then they'll produce great tea and they'll produce terrible tea. It's not so bad for the plantation. It is bad if you run a tea company trying to keep that, that flavor and taste like you asked, you know, right through the year. Because when you're a customer and you, I mean, like, let's, let's take the resort, for example. St. Andrews is one of their top selling teas. And I remember about two years ago, we were really worried if the season would come in. We, we missed it. We, the season, the traditional, uh, you know, seasonal quality season, we missed it. And we were really running, running low on the stocks. And thankfully, the season came in later on because weather patterns have just changed so much. It's so hard to predict when, you know, when the traditional seasons will happen. For example, I mean, just recently, just last week, we had a mudslide uh, on a tea plantation in Sri Lanka and up to 400 people were missing. And usually at this point in the year, it's not supposed to be raining. But we've had continuous rain for the past three months, which is completely unusual. I mean, at the same time, look at the weather yesterday, you know? You're into November, nice sunshine, it's not too cold, you know? So weather patterns around the world have changed. And, and to be bluntly honest, it's causing a lot of havoc on tea plantations. The other reason why we write down um, which field and bush it's from is, you know how I showed you the picture of, of the tea plucker? The women are going to love this. Men, ask any tea planter, men cannot pluck tea. <laughs> no, men honestly cannot pluck tea. They just cannot do it. It's, I, I don't know what it is, but you know when you're supposed to pluck two leaves in a bud like that lady had in her hand? Do you know what men pluck? Yeah, literally, yeah, fourth, uh, up to fourth leaf. They'll just hammer the tea bush and you have two things that are caused. Number one, their leaf is separated. The factory officer who has to take in the leaf is screaming at the field officers who've allowed this to be plucked. That's number one that you always find on a, on a plantation. Number two, the week after, when their wives come to pluck the bush that they've plucked, they're then shouting at the tea planter that their own husbands have ruined their tea bush and this is going to affect their, their yield. Because if you pluck a tea bush wrong, it won't have an effect today, tomorrow. It will in a month's time, you know? So that's the second thing you find. And the third thing you find is while everyone else on the tea plantation is working, where do you think most of the, mo most of the men pluckers are at four o'clock? Exactly, in the bar, you know? So same place, different kinds of problems. So what's the life of a tea bush? Great question. Um, well, Tea bushes, I mean, there are some tea bushes in Sri Lanka that are about 120 years old. In fact, the first tea bush that was planted by James Taylor, who was a Scot, who, is up, who came up from Lawrence Kirk, some of his tea bushes on Lul Condra Estate are still there, and they still produce tea. However, after about 80 years, a tea bush will start to decrease in the amount of yield that it produces. So around about 70 years, tea plantations will uproot tea bushes, and, uh, and, they will, and they will do a replanting process. But that's a long time, isn't it? It's a long time, yeah. And, but you have to understand that from the point of a tea seed being planted in your nursery to it giving you tea once a week, it's, it, it's a seven-year process. It's a seven-year process. And then for it to give you its best tea, you're looking at after about 20 years. So my theory is flower. Do so these tea bushes never flower? They're never allowed to? They're never allowed to flower. Um, because we're plucking, that's why. But if you let it grow up to, up to, up to 10 meters, you will start to see the flowers coming through. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, one of the things tea planters have to deal with is, for example, um, if it rains a lot, and because it's quite humid as well. Pardon? Exactly, yes. Uh, you, we, we get a problem called blister blight, which is almost a fungal disease that grows on the leaf and it kills off the leaf and eventually will kill the bush. And to stop this, planters will use, um, they will copper spray. They'll put copper spray on the leaves before the rains come in. You have a host of other diseases. You've got 
Did you guys see the rugby pitch at, uh, at Murrayfield last year when England played Scotland and you saw the pitch breaking away? Do you, know, do you know what caused that? It was nematode. It was nematode in the soil, which is a small organism that eats away at the roots, and that affects tea bushes as well. Um, so there are ways, there are chemical ways that you can deal with them, but in the same way, there are ways within nature that you can, that you can deal with this. And in Sri Lanka, we're actually the world's first um, ozone-friendly tea-producing uh, tea nation because we've banned the use of methyl bromide, which is a defumigation chemical. So for nematode, there's two ways you can deal with nematode. Number one, you can use methyl bromide in your soil, which depletes the ozone layer. Or number two, you can plant lemongrass. You can plant lemongrass either into, your, into, the, into the soil um, with the bushes to stop the nematode, or if you're in a replanting phase and you've uprooted your bush, what we do in Sri Lanka is we will plant lemongrass right through, uh, right through the plantation. We'll leave that for 18 months to make sure that there's no trace of nematode. However, it's a lot more costly and it also means that you're leaving your land fallow. But the environmental factors outweigh the time, the time factor. So, this is, so these are some of the things that we do in Sri Lanka. And the other thing that we do in Sri Lanka is we're, we're known as the world's cleanest tea producing nation because we don't, well, we hardly use any pesticides and herbicides in our teas, as opposed to some of the nations that just hammer the plantation with, uh, with a lot of pesticide and, and herbicide. I was talking to a lady yesterday, actually, and she said that she gets headaches when she has tea. And I've noticed the same thing whenever I taste Chinese teas. I always tend to get a headache. And the reason, and personally, I mean, this isn't a, a, a proven thing, but I personally think that, it, that it's due to the fact that there's so much pesticides in, 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 in a lot of Chinese teas that, that tend to cause headaches. So something to look at when you, when you buy your next cup of tea. Um, the methods of removing the caffeine. The way that they, the way that they get rid of caffeine um, is, you know, the way that we use for our tea to get rid of caffeine is you pass CO2 through the actual tea leaves and, 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 that, gets rid of, uh, and that gets rid of the caffeine. I think the process takes about anywhere between six to eight hours, if I'm not mistaken. But there is another chemical process that you can use to get rid of, uh, that you can use to get rid of the caffeine. And it's probably best to find out which process is being used, if it's a CO2 process or if it's the chemical process. So how can you find that particular It should be on the labeling. It should be on the labeling, um, and, and, and they should specify this. We certainly specify it on ours to say that, you know, it comes through CO2. And it should be on the, de on the decaffeinated tea. Um, but what kind, of, what kind of decaffeinated tea are you using at the moment? Well, it's Tesco blend, and it's Scottish decaffeinated, which mm -hmm. I understand is blended, Tesco's blend, so that wherever in the country you buy your tea and you drink it, it's blended to the water. To That's right. Content. Yes, yes, yes. So I, I actually buy that one because of the flavour. I don't drink caffeine because I do get headaches. Headaches. I drink too much. So that's why I have to go for decaffeinated. Right. It could be the pesticide use, though. Because when I, if, if I drink green tea from Japan, it's, it's fine. If I drink green tea from China, I always tend to get a headache. And the only thing I can really put it down to is, 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 is the pesticide use. A lot of people think it is the caffeine, but uh, it might be an idea to try, to try, uh, try tea from another source that, that uses less pesticide. Yeah. Going on to the next process. Um, so we wither our tea for up to 12 hours. We take the moisture out, and we have a limp tea leaf. The next thing that we want to do is we want to impart a twist. We want to impart a twist on the tea leaf. We want to break the cells. We want to extract that flavor inside, and we want to open it up to, uh, to the air um, for it to react and for us to have a good cup of tea. And we do this using a rolling machine. So the tea is fed in through these chutes from the top. Mm -hmm. 